practice this week in anticipation of the 50,000 people here, and I'll be keeping track of it with my noise meter here as it bounces off the ceiling and cascades back on the field. An interesting patent, Brent, to see if Joe Paterno doesn't try to strike early to take this noisy crowd out of the game. Now back to you. All right, John, thank you. First, he must get the ball back. They will kick it off, and Ray Tarassi will put the ball in play for Penn State. The deep man on the right. There's that familiar number. 44 down there. And this is Owens. Young, sensational running back, Michael Owens, out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's the most famous number ever worn at Syracuse. And Tarassi is ready. We'll see if he puts it in the youngster's hands or elects to kick away from it. goes beyond Ingram into the end zone for a touchback and it'll come out on the 20. Not a real good communication back there. Yeah, it's one of those I got it, you take it uh, jobs. Let's meet the Syracuse offense. This is a splendid quarterback. Don McPherson, he's out of Long Island. Solid running backs, Robert Drummond, Daryl Johnston, the hardworking fullback. His receivers, Tommy Kane from Montreal, Canada. And Devil Glover, Kane the star. Now McPherson for his style is a running quarterback, but he does also possess a strong arm. Some rival coaches have said he's one of the more exciting quarterbacks in all of college football. Your impression of him, Pat? Well, I think he's more than a one-dimensional quarterback, which you don't see much in college football anymore. Unlike most option quarterbacks, he can drop back in the pocket and deliver the ball downfield. Remember, Gustafelis is not in there defensively. Eddie Johnson is out. Two new corners for Joe Paterno. And McPherson will go to work against them right away. Down deep, down the middle. Eddie's got it. They'll score on the first play of the game. Rob Moore for a touchdown. 80 yards. sensational job by Syracuse because in the pregame warm-up they realized that Penn State was starting two new corners the free safety there actually falls down on the turf remember they play on grass most of the time and Rob Moore's got all kinds of speed caught a 71 yard touchdown pass two weeks ago now the player who fell was Brian Chismar that's the Penn State player he is a regular back there. He fell to the artificial turf. And what an explosion here at the start. Now they will attempt the extra point. They have the longest consecutive streak in college football. The best lane to attempt it. They are closing in on Alabama's record of 199. It's alive, and that's seven points. Brent, I think you give Dick McPherson an awful lot of credit there. You came out in the pregame warm-ups. One of the things a coaching staff does is to see if all the other opposing teams' regulars are out warming up. Clearly, they found that Penn State was missing Eddie Johnson, and they went right to work on the corner on the very first play. It took all of 10 seconds for Syracuse to score against the defending national champions. Give you an idea over there on the corners today. Wayne Downing is filling in for Gary Wilkerson, who's been left off the team because of academic problems. Then Eddie Johnson pulled a hamstring in practice on Thursday. And so today it'll be two youngsters, Dwayne Downing and Kevin Woods. Kevin is a senior, but he has not had the experience that Eddie Johnson has had. Penn State shorthanded in the secondary, and it did not take Syracuse long to light it up. Now Coach ready to bring back the kickoff for the Nittany Lions. Vesseline will kick it off. And Joe Paterno did not get the crowd out of this one. Coates at the six. Forced out around the 26-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Penn State offense, and they have some splendid weapons. Matt Kisner, somewhat in and out so far this year. 
as the Penn State quarterback. Blair Thomas, folks, he's a candidate for the Heisman. John Green converts from tailback to full. Great speed here with Ray Roundtree, Michael Alexander. We heard John Dockery say that Joe Paterno wanted to come early and throw the ball, gets up on the board, and that's exactly what their game plan is early. Try to get the ball to the speed on the outside. On first down, Kisner comes back incomplete, and Thomas should have held on. He simply bobbled the ball as he turned around. I'll tell you, this can kind of happen to a player. I think everybody on Penn State right now is just stunned by the early score. Kisner does a nice job of coming off. He was trying to go downfield, and the ball was well thrown. Thomas should have caught it. Actually, a very good receiver has caught 12 passes this year. Now, the key for that offensive line, they had to double the nose man, Gregory, on that play. If he draws two blockers all game, it's going to be hard going on the inside. Now, they'll come with Thomas as a running back. Here he comes, folks. Here comes Gregory. He will set the tone for this defensive unit. You can only be a strong defense if you're stout down the middle. The nose tackle right there, number 93, Ted Gregory. It's hard to get to his legs. You see that? He's got real strong arms. Very difficult to get to his legs, and he does not stay blocked. Tremendous pursuit down the line of scrimmage. And he's backed up by two strong inside linebackers, Bavaro and Ward. Now this is a 12 yards they need here to get a first down. Under pressure, Kisner eludes the tacklers. Strong performance by Kisner. He's short of the first down, but he saved valuable yardage by breaking free of the defensive player that time. That was Rob Burnett who got in across the line of scrimmage. Now Penn State will punt. Bad snap. Under pressure, they get it off, and Paul with the fair catch at the 37-yard line. So Syracuse strikes first. It's 7-0 over Penn State. Well, we are back in the Carrier Dome, and there's the wide receiver who caught that 80-yard scoring pass. Now, that's his second long one of the year. 71-yarder two weeks ago. Here's the second offensive play of the game for McPherson. He was not pressured on that pass. He had a lot of time. Now he runs Drummond. He's a workman-like tailback. He's not as spectacular as Blair Thomas, but he'll pound away, and... Syracuse hopes he does not make the critical mistake. The offensive line being used today, John Garrett is the center on that line. And there are the two guards, Flannery and Bednarz, Stopel and Sims. There are two redshirt freshmen, and the tight end is a good one, number 84, Pat Kelly. They'll go to him. They were using him a lot in practice yesterday. McPherson needing seven for the first down. Johnson, the defensive tackle number 51, makes the stop. Let me set those linebackers that we have out there. Because along with Johnson, who's 51, the four behind him could be the key today. Kurt Bernier, number 41, is working right now with Keith Karpensky. But Karpensky has been hurt off and on this year. He'll be in and out. Now in the inside, now there's the outside. We've had a change on the inside. Scott Gobb has replaced Trey Bauer. Bauer slowed up by injuries, not there. Darrell Washington out there. You want to keep an eye on the Penn State linebackers. They are the heart of Joe Paterno's defense year in and year out, as many of you are aware. McPherson straight back completes his second pass to midfield. Now Scott Gobb had to drop back defensively that time. Robert Drummond came out of the backfield to make the catch. Drummond, he is out of the backfield. You're going to see him make the play out of the backfield. This is one of the things that Syracuse does so well is get their backs out of the backfield. This is his 11th catch of the year. He's already caught a touchdown pass. And the nice thing that he did there is pick up the first down yardage. So many backs won't come out and get you the six or seven yards that you need. 
Balls at midfield with this first down. They'll slot to the left. McPherson showing pass all the way this time. And he's got it to Kelly, the tight end. And he gets down to that 36-yard line. Darrell Washington, the linebacker, coming back to make the stop. So with the problems on the corner for Penn State, McPherson, both of them, quarterback and coach, are going to the air path. And inside passes, too, or ordinarily your inside linebackers make the plays. And again, with the injuries to the inside linebackers, a very smart offensive game plan here in the first quarter. He is already three of three passing for 100 yards and the one touchdown, the 80-yarder. Draw should be an effective play when they expect the pass, and he gets inside the 30-yard line. Robert Drummond, the junior tailback out of Jamesville, New York, before Kevin Woods can bring him down. You know, Brent, the Penn State uh, safeties have always been very strong tacklers as well, but because they're so concerned, Penn State is about the corners, they're really rotating the corners up and protecting them deep by the safeties such that there's no support right now by the safeties. Injury riddled Penn State defense facing a second and two. They bring Woods up. He's a stand up on the scrimmage line expecting the run. Good defensive call that time. He's going to be very close to a first down, and Bernier makes the tackle. The defensive staff was ready for that run. This Syracuse offense can give you a lot of different things to be concerned about, particularly in short yardage. They're, they can come out in a wishbone formation, or they can run the option uh, play down the line of scrimmage as well. And they have thrown the ball in short yardage. They'll show the full house here. They'll show Johnston, Barnes, and Drummond, and they'll break into the wishbone. They're short yardage, and they'll run McPherson. Now, he needed a yard to get the first down. He was met by the middle of that defense. One of the things I want to point out about Don McPherson, the quarterback, with his coach looking on, is that he has been playing with a leg injury this year, and he has not shown too much option. I talked to Tim Rose, the Miami coach, and he said they were probably protecting that leg. But here today, they fully intend to run him a little bit more against the Penn State defense. They're going to call a timeout and measure this. It is very close. You know, McPherson takes tremendous pride in his passing. He's not a natural passer, but he's worked hard on it over four years. And he's another one of those guys that seems like he's been playing for 15 years because he started as a freshman down here, or up here, and done exceedingly well. Very good thrower, but worked on it. football coach over at UMass and today he takes on the master Joe Perverno who has dominated the East for more than two decades. Finds himself behind by a touchdown early to Syracuse. Here's Drummond. Inside the 20 before Marcus Henderson can bring him down. Gobb, one of the replacement linebackers inside. He is number 63. He guesses here a little bit inside, and they go off tackle. It was a defensive audible. He gets double teamed down. A terrific block by Stoppel, number 76, and that's a good audible by McPherson. Audible's about, oh, 60% of the time. After faking to Johnston, he throws incomplete. Kane could not hold on. Had something nice set up there, Brent. Uh, the, the corner, Kevin Woods, again, very concerned about getting beat deep. Played very, very loose. That's the face of a football coach, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's like Sparky Anderson a little bit. We'll see Tony Rice next week against USC. He's supposed to be fine athlete out of the Carolinas, South Carolina, I believe. Took over when Anderson fell because of the injury. So here's a third down for Syracuse. Good protection. Incomplete. He threw into coverage that time. And Darrell Washington took Kelly the tight on. And Washington beat the tight end that time. That was good linebacking for Joe Paterno. 
the first time we've seen the inside linebackers actually make a play because they have been throwing the ball over the center of the defense. But Washington read the quarterback all the way. It's a zone. He's got his eyes on the quarterback, and as soon as the tight end comes into his zone, he made the play, reacted well. So it'll be a field goal attempt here of 37 yards by Bessling. touchdown pass to Moore and then a 37 yard Vesseling field goal and Syracuse leads Penn State 10 to nothing with 840 to go here in the first quarter. Penn State is really not a great catch up type of ball club particularly this year although they thought they were going to throw the ball Joe Paterno was going to throw the ball a lot this year the last four games they've been giving it to Blair Thomas. So the return men, whom Vesling will be kicking off to, are Leroy Thompson there to your right. He's number 44 out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and the veteran Jim Coates, 49. He handled the first one. they can stop here at Syracuse, the run pass. Well, the front three are so strong. They have a tradition of playing very good defense here. They have ever since Dick McPherson has been the coach, and he comes from the defensive side of the ball. Look how high-ranked those teams are. With good defenses against the run. Now Penn State trailing by 10. That doesn't happen in the East very often. Out close to the 20 and Ward, number 52, jams into that hole. You know, Ted, Ted Gregory is such a dominating defensive nose man that what they try to do is funnel things back inside to him. Difficult to run outside. See all the gaps there? There's an orange jersey or a blue jersey in every hole there, every gap. Good gap control by the orange man. the sideline round three reaching for it out of bounds incomplete round three number six with excellent hands but he did not stay in bounds and uh, oh coach Mack he was helping officiate over there that time <laughs> you always do at home don't you you know this could really be a very difficult place for an opposing team to play football Syracuse is a, may very well get this program turned around here this year This third and seven, Syracuse will go with the additional defensive back, expecting Kisner to pass. See Thomas slip out. He cannot get it off. Oh, plays number 94 led the assault. He's a dandy defensive lineman. This defensive front is so quick off the ball. Once the ball is snapped, there, immediately there's four guys upfield. They push right upfield, beat the tackles. Ford Kisner inside, and Burnett, number 70, gets the first shot at him. But Penn State is going to have to try to slow the rush down with some draws and screens. Now Chris Klaus, an excellent punter, gets a better snap and lofts a beauty. Fair catch signaled at the 48-yard line. Tommy Kane makes it a 40-yard punt. Excellent field position again for Syracuse. They have a touchdown and a field goal to show for their first two possessions here this afternoon.
Michael Owens, number 44, is the new tailback. He replaces Drummond. Johnston, the fullback, goes nowhere as Polamalu, the nose tackle, number 99, met him immediately. One of the things Syracuse wants to do is establish the fullback Daryl Johnson early so that the Penn State inside linebackers will stay at home. Then Nick Pearson is going to get on the corner of the defense where he creates most of the problems. Without Giftopoulos, without Bauer, that's Washington relaying the defensive signals to Joe Paterno's huddle. Now 10 yards to go for a first down. We would expect Owens soon to handle the ball. Doing. McPherson now throws to the tight end Kelly for a first down. Thirteen yard gain, and for more on the injury situation, let's go downstairs to John. And Brent, as if the Penn State defense didn't have enough problems, if you just swing the camera over here, you'll see number 41, Kurt Bernier, linebacker. He's got ice on his knee. They took off his brace. They're not sure whether he'll play again. They wrapped his knee. So more problems for the Penn State defense. Now back to you, Brent. All right, Doc, thank you. We may see Quintus McDonald. It's David Jacob also playing. He's out there right now. McPherson on a first down. Now here comes Owens. He's dangerous. Going for the first down. Some guys are just naturals, and Michael Owens is one of those. But it was interesting, Brent. Everybody in the crowd stood up as soon as Owens got his hands on the ball. I'll tell you something about this young man out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. As you watch how exciting he is on the outside, he has a brother who is 6'9", whom I met last night. He's being heavily recruited by the Syracuse basketball team. You know what Coach Beheim said to the quarterback, McPherson? Get that ball into Michael Owen's hands a lot. That'll help me get his brother. <laughs> McPherson incomplete. That was Keen 82 working the far sideline. That tells it all, folks. You don't see that up against Penn State much, do you? You sure don't, Pat. Joe Paterno would not like the alibi, but there is just no way that he can face an offense with this beat-up defense that he's got. I mean, he is really decimated by injuries, and John Doctor telling us that Bernier is now out. Here's McPherson keeping it. That was Marcus Henderson, the safety, number three, bringing him down. Well, we just saw the score. Let's get an update, and here's Jim Nance. Well, Brent, here's how it happened. Watch the reverse pivot by Steve Taylor. Just freeze the Cowboy defense, and Rod Smith scores from 29 yards out. Five minutes to go, first quarter, Nebraska in front. Back to Brent's pack. It seems like every fall, Oklahoma State goes 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, and here comes Nebraska. That's the ball that was picked out yesterday at practice. The quarterback has the choice which one feels comfortable to him. Was the one that McPherson liked yesterday. Deflected. That's the kind of ball you can intercept, and that's the kind of play that Penn State made a year ago when they won the national championship. I'll tell you what, Scott Gobb was going to pick this ball off had it not been tipped. But this is a lost start, I think. Defensive linemen putting their arms up. You get some tall guys inside. McPherson is about 6'1. Get those hands up, the big paws. It gets tipped there by 73, Kirkendall, but seat number 63, Gobb, he was about to step in and make the interception. So here's Vesseling again, and he's attempting a 35-yarder. Inside the 50, he is 22 of 26 for his career. And he rings up three more. But Penn State can take heart in one thing. They have held Syracuse to field goals in their last two assaults. There's like a caged Nittany Lion over there. Seldom does he find himself down 13 points this early in a ball game. Normally, he strikes first, then he turns ball control loose on you. But here this afternoon, he's going to have to go to the passing of Matt Kisner there behind him. 
it would seem like a perfect opportunity to go to some of that outside speed against Syracuse, and Pat Penn State's got tons of it. They really do. They've had more speed in the receivers than they've ever had, but the last four weeks, interestingly enough, they've gone back to the ball control, and that's where they've had the success. Get the ball to Blair Thomas. Desling to kick it off, and you saw Coach standing back there by the goal line. He's returned a couple already. Syracuse scores the first three times they touch the ball. A touchdown and two field goals. Here he comes again. Busts the tackle this time and runs hard out to the 27-yard line where it'll be first and 10. Well, one more week of replacement games. Tomorrow we'll take the air at 12.30 and... A good one will be New Orleans against Chicago. The Saints with a lot of veterans back, and they probably should have beaten St. Louis, but they self-destructed a week ago. That's the main game, and later, some of you will see St. Louis, San Francisco, and the Giants against Buffalo. We'll all start at 12.30 Eastern time. I think that young man was at the pep rally last night, wasn't he? Now here they bring some of that speed around from the wingback spot. That was John Green, who's a tailback, converted to fullback, and they like to move him around in that formation because he's not the natural fullback like Paterno had there. He's only 187 year. pounds, you're absolutely right, but it gives him a quick burst up the middle from the fullback position. And he's played three different positions at Penn State and found a home at fullback. Now they're keeping him over there. You can see where he went in the formation, that left wing. That's Green. And they run Blair Thomas behind him. Well, we talked about Heisman Trophy candidates, Pat, and we have mentioned it already today, but he's been scoring touchdowns, gaining yards, and no one wants to take charge yeah. of that particular It is an race. unusual, uh, very much an unusual race for the Heisman Trophy this year. It's very difficult, I think, for a wide receiver to win the award. It's really a, a tailback's award, and there's a few of them that are beginning to distinguish themselves now, and he's one of them. Well, that wide receiver, Tim Brown, we'll see him next Saturday for Notre Dame. One yard to go for the first down. They put in the extra blocker. Up over the top, Airborne. He scored a touchdown against Rutgers that way last Saturday. And this is just what Penn State needs to do right now. Not necessarily score quickly. Just move the chains. Get a few first downs. Take a look here at Blair Thomas. Tremendous spring in his legs. Big, thick legs. Say, lots of tailbacks have that ability to get up and over. A lot easier to jump on this turf, too. Pat 312 left in the first quarter, and that is the first first down for the Nittany Lions. Now Kisner will swing it out to Thomas, and he was well defended that time. Terry Wooden, number 90. He's a standout defensively. He read that play perfectly. Even though it was a quick pass, watch again the nose tackle. Ted Gregory gets in very, very quickly. He gets a great jump on the ball. Very quickly, Kisner gets rid of it rather quickly, and there is Wood, number 90, a terrific outside linebacker. Plays their, their, their weak side, not over the tight end much. They move Green again. something on this time and they've cut Blair Thomas off. Well, he got all he could out of that play. There is a penalty flag down at the 38-yard line. That was a great move by Blair Thomas because he was supposed to hand that ball to Michael Alexander on the reverse, but there was so much penetration, he read it and didn't give it to him. Offside in the defense. It was on Gregory. He was a little anxious. And I think that's one of the things you can do to this defense is draw them off sides because they are so active and want to get the jump on the ball. Going a long count. Oklahoma up 14-3. And Georgia Tech with an early lead on Auburn. And how about LSU? Some figure that might be a lot closer. And Clemson having a battle against Duke in the second half. So they put the ball up at the 37. To get a first down, they must go to the 49. Alexander slotted to the right of Kisner. And they run green. 
They are so tough to run against, Syracuse, even though it was a four down lineman set and there were some stunts, everybody is disciplined, everybody stays in their lane. They don't stunt out of the play, even though they're twisting up front. Turno checking the clock. 129 to go in the opening quarter. You can see the knee braces being worn by all the players in the Penn State team as they come to the line. Bring Green in motion. They overload to the right. Kisner comes underneath, almost intercepted. Ball was deflected, and Mangrum, number 28, came diving in after it. Again, pressure on Kisner up front. There's Wisniewski, number 66, doing a nice job of protection this time, but Kisner was under some heat. And then the ball was almost picked off by Manger, number 28. Again, he was playing strong safety, read the pattern, and I think he actually baited Kisner, wanted him to throw the ball. Now it'll be Klaus. Wow. This is Keen at the 10. Great cutback. Syracuse out of bad field position with that return of 19 yards. Well, there's the quarterback, Don McPherson. We asked him what this game means to him and also to Syracuse. Well, this is definitely the biggest game that a lot of us have ever played, and it's something that we've been waiting for a long time. It's, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime shot of being 5-0, and coming off a bad season last year, and uh, it's a chance for us to show our wares to the rest of the nation. It's also a chance for him to show his wares. There are a number of professional scouts here watching. Let's see if he has all the skills necessary to quarterback in the NFL. Out of a double tight end, running the option that time. Here's Owens. And Owens to the 36-yard line. So Bernier still receiving treatment on that far sideline, putting an added burden on that linebacking crew. And I do see Trey Bauer, number 35, working on the inside. There he is, battling injuries all season long for Coach Paterno. Overpowered the defense that time. The results of the three possessions by Syracuse. That was the opening pass play of 80 yards, and then they settled for field goals the next two trips. And we come to the end of the first quarter with the score, Syracuse 13, Penn State nothing. College football on CBS returns after this message and a word from your local station. There's a young man with a big job for Penn State. Linebacker David Jacob has been moved from the left over to the right outside spot. He's a junior from Clifton Park, New York, with the veteran Keith Karpinski. On the left side, they will direct a lot of running plays now out against Jacob. They set their slot to the right. If we start the second quarter with Syracuse leading 13 to nothing. And McPherson swings to Owens on that side. And Owens that time forcing McCartan, the backup nose man, to come back and make the stop. I think the screen on first down is a great call because it's one of the things you don't expect. John Flannery, number 53, is the guard who's going to put a nice block outside. See 53? Richard, freshman, he blocks Gobb, number 63. And then Owens does a nice job of reading it and stepping inside. Terrific block. Got his head out in front so it wasn't a clip. yards for the first down. Johnston batters for a couple of 
those yards until Gobb makes the stop. Daryl Johnson is one of those guys at fullback who, whose stats don't show up much. He's not going to run for 150 yards in those kinds of games, but you need guys like Johnson to win. He's a terrific blocker. He makes Drummond and Owens go. Great for a team. Need about 20 of Daryl Johnson's on your team. It was a challenge for the Syracuse offensive line, needing three yards for the first down. Johnston, the fullback. Owens, the tailback. They split the two. And McPherson to throw. Owens covered. Comes back to his secondary target for the first down. Tommy Kane, the junior from Montreal, Quebec, gets open. A 15-yard gain. Again, over the middle of the defense, too. And give McPherson some credit because he's really spreading it around. See, he looks right first. He tries to go right, then he comes back. Excellent protection. And he finds Kane over the middle. Again, beating Gobb, number 63. That's a linebacker's play, not the corners. Kane grew up playing hockey in Canada. And number 82 was on the same line as a youngster as the great Mario Lemieux. Kane was the, the center, and Lemieux one of the wingers. Lemieux, of course, now a standout in Pittsburgh, one of the great players in the NHL. McPherson going for Kane, and he's got it at the 10-yard line. That's a great catch of 21 yards. This actually should have been broken up by number three, Marcus Henderson, the free safety, because the ball was in the air quite a long time. The corner hits him short, and that is actually supposed to be the safety's man. I think Henderson tripped on the AstroTurf. Remember, Penn State plays on grass. Not only did he play hockey, but he was discovered by Beheim. He came to a basketball camp. Beheim came back to the coaching staff and said, this young man's got a great vertical leap. He played high school football and hockey in Canada, and Coach Mack you might want to try him out. I'm not sure he's big enough for our basketball team. And they have found themselves a splendid wide receiver. Penalty flags go down. The whistle sounded. We've had a relatively penalty-free game here so far. You know, Brent, I've really been impressed with the offensive line thus far. Syracuse has done a nice job of protecting uh, McPherson. Really hasn't had much of a rush on him. In the offense. I think they were probably trying to get a timeout here on the side. I think Coach Mack, that's, oh, yeah. uh, that's what he was trying to do over there. But instead, time runs out, and they're assessed with a five-yard penalty. They are making some mistakes. This one, of course, a mental blunder down close to the goal line. Remember, they score early on the bomb, but they settle for a couple of field goals after that. Still all, Penn State has not scored. falls on the ball. You know, Pat, you see so many youngsters who would try to reach down and pick it up and take off again, but Kane just got down on top of it. But I think you avoid this fumble by handing the ball off rather than pitching it. Watch here, Owens, he's going to flip the ball. It's a little bit high, but you expect a wide receiver to catch that kind. But if you hand the ball to the wide receiver, you don't have that problem. I think he took his eye off it, didn't he? Didn't, shouldn't Kane have had that ball? Oh, yeah, he's a receiver. He should catch those. It, it was set up beautifully. They were going to score on the backside of the play. Moving him back out of scoring range here. Second and 24. Now they have more split out to the right. You see him there at the bottom of your screen. He's already scored one touchdown. Pressure from the middle. And McPherson cannot get it off. That was Polamalu. The starting nose tackle returns to the game. And the Irish were up by two touchdowns. And now it is 14-7. McPherson has to be careful here. They're not going to get the first down, really. He has to be careful that he doesn't turn the ball over or take a sack. Just get three points out of this possession. Kane and Owens, the wide receiver. So we're alive in Syracuse with the Orangemen leading Penn State. 13 to nothing. He goes for the touchdown, and Kane diving catch what a grab a 
terrific call, Brent. It's only a three-step drop or five-step drop, so you're not going to get the sack. He just puts the ball up. He has tremendous confidence in Kane. He's obviously well-colored, but a great athlete. He goes up and makes a sensational catch. What right. we've talked about is hockey yep. prowess, basketball. I want to tell you something. He can play baseball with a catch like that. And I think the underthrown deep ball is one of the best weapons in football. The string is still alive. On the underthrown deep ball, very rarely can the defensive back see the ball. I think the receiver has a tremendous advantage, particularly when you have a guy like Kane who can go up at the peak of his jump. Syracuse up big early. Our situation in Syracuse. Let's go down to Vern Lundquist in Stillwater, Oklahoma for a check in on Oklahoma State and Nebraska. We want to welcome those of you who've been watching Syracuse and Penn State. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Dick Camillo. 7 0. Nebraska leads and they're moving now. They have had the offensive domination, though they haven't scored one. They've only scored one. That's Brian Carpenter, tackled by Sim Green, number 53, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Another fine gain on first down, where Nebraska has been terrific so far in the ball game. 50,000 on hand here in Stillwater, a battle of unbeaten second-ranked Nebraska against 12th-ranked Oklahoma State. The first time since 1945 that Oklahoma State comes in with a 5-0 record. Second down and three. Oklahoma, or Nebraska rather. Ken Clark goes right, gets a good block. First down at the 28 yard line. Nebraska continues to move. So we'll send those of you watching Syracuse and Penn State back to Brent Musburger. All right, Fern, thank you. And we will continue to check in and get updates on that game. Here it is a shocker so far. Not that Syracuse is ahead, but the margin. They lead Penn State 20 to nothing. We have 10.37 to go in the first half. Vesseling bangs one, and Coates will come out again. That tackle is indicative of how Syracuse is playing as Alban Brown again gets downfield and rips into the return man. What a day 34 is having. Tommy Kane's catch was really all him because there's double coverage. The first guy here is Kevin Woods. He's going to push him inside to the free safety right here. Number three, Henderson, who's going to pick him up. This is just what they wanted to do. They funnel him inside. There's the push. And there's Henderson, the free safety. He's well covered. Now, he's got a well cover, but the underthrown deep ball. You see, Henderson looks back, but he can't find it. And there's the play by Kane. On first down, they run a straight power play into the middle of the defense. And David Bavaro, number 59, in on the stop. Let's talk a little bit about that linebacker for Syracuse. You are familiar with his brother, the tight end for the Super Bowl champions. That's Mark Bavaro's brother there, number 59. He's six foot, 224 pounds, a little bit shorter than his brother, and about as quiet, folks. I had a lengthy conversation, about eight words, and, and that was it yesterday. But he's a talented athlete, just like his older brother. Now on second down, throws a nice pass over there to Michael Timpson out of Miami. Now, when you talk about speed out here on the field, Timpson may be able to outrun anyone on the field right now. And Joe Paterno with a couple of words for him. He'd like to unleash that speed in this game. And this is a very important series for Penn State's offense. It's very important for them to get something going, pick up some first downs, and at least get three on the board. Got to well, keep their defense off the field. Folks, I'm going to tell you one thing. If Syracuse gets an opportunity to run it up, they will. They have been hammered by Penn State through the year. Blair Thomas with a great run across midfield and there was the finest run he's shown us 18 yards and David Holmes number 38 saved the touchdown you know Blair Thomas gives you such a small target to hit he's 190 pounds and he's only 5'11 but when he bends over there he's in the eye formation all by himself a nice little call on the draw the hole was wide open but he gives you a real small target and a strong runner they control Gregory and for the first time they get across midfield Kisner barking out the signal. Timpson and 
Simpson was making a turn back to the inside and he threw out in front of him and it would have been a very tough catch for the young wide receiver. The defense Penn State faces here today, Pat. Number one versus the run. I'll tell you, that sets up everything else. If you get a team in second and eight and nine and third and eight and nine, it, uh, Syracuse has a great four down lineman scheme where they twist and put a lot of pressure on the passer. Had only 40 yards of offense against that defense here so far. They run the draw. Blair Thomas scooting to the outside. Made his way for about two yards before Paul Fraze, number 94, brings him down. Look at what Michigan did. One of the things that you haven't seen Penn State do today, you really don't see Penn State do much, is throw the ball over the middle. They're always very concerned of getting the ball picked off. But when you have a tall outside receivers like they have and the speed they have, you've got to get the ball to them over the middle on the move. Coates and Timpson are still the wide men. incomplete and a penalty flag thrown on the far side Terry Wooden was covering tight end Bob Morosco number 89 and the penalty marker goes down on the far side pass interference from the defense automatic first down And we saw the tight end there, Brosco, working to the outside, but there's some holes inside on the defense. Wooden, a very aggressive defensive player, somewhat over-aggressive in that situation, <laughs> allowing Penn State to pick up a first down here and keep this drive going. I think the referee might want to say something. First down. There he signaled it again. I think Wooden is going to be an awesome player. He's only a sophomore. He's had a great year this year. But two more years out of him. Great off the corner. So they're at the Syracuse 42. Each yard closer is their best penetration of the afternoon. Simpson coming in motion. Going to bring Green around from the wing. He eludes the tackle cut back to the 35 yard line that's a good call against an aggressive defense when you have somebody like Syracuse who really gets off the ball really gets up field what you want to do is try to run some traps some misdirection plays and that's what we saw there from Green seven years at Syracuse Marcus Paul, number 10, is a fine safety here for the Orangemen. Kisner goes deep. He overthrows Timpson, and it's intercepted by Chris Ingram, number 24. He overthrew the receiver, and Ingram was right there to make a fine over the head catch. as a quarterback when you have great confidence in your arm and you end in your wide receiver. This fellow, Timpson, was not open all the way, but Kisner has great confidence not only in his arm, but the way he's going to try to go up and get it. But it's clearly overthrown. Ingram with a 20 to nothing lead is just backing up and reading the quarterback. So Syracuse up by 20 points with 7.50 to go. This is such a big statistic for a team. Now the other side of that, Penn State hasn't forced nearly the number of turnovers that they did last year. Let's go to New York. Five and zero, oh, and trying to be six and zero. Oh. And bowl scouts are here from the Cotton Bowl, and the Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Sun Bowl. Big day for Syracuse and its football team. Time remaining. McPherson is 9 of 13 for 198 yards, and he's thrown two touchdown passes. And Robert Drummond, 36, returns as the tailback. That's 
the tight end, 84, slotted out there far to the right. He's a good one. They run Drummond on that delay into the heart of the defense. Trey Bauer. Well, John Dockery has got one of those fellows who wore number 44 here at Syracuse. Doc, who's with you? Brent, we all remember one of the great ones, Floyd Little. And Floyd, how good is this Syracuse team? I'm shocked by the score at the moment. What about well, you? They're a pretty good football team. They got two good running backs, a good quarterback in Donnie McPherson, two real good wide receivers, and their defense isn't bad. Let's it's go back up to Brent. I want to ask you about number 44 after this play. Hold on a second. All right, Doc, we'll come right back down. There was movement there. And <laughs> You could see the offensive line jump around. So let's send it back down right now to Doc while they sort out this penalty. John? Thank you, Brent. We were talking about number 44, a very special number here at Syracuse. What about the man wearing it now? This, this Owens kid, he really got some good moves. I didn't realize he was as good as he is. 5'11", 215, good football player. Good football player. Freshman. Freshman. <laughs> uh, well, right thank you, Floyd. Time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Brent, now up to you. Speaking of good football players, number 44, of course, all of you remember Jimmy Brown. He came out of Long Island for the late Ernie Davis. Now, Owens, they didn't give it to him because they thought he would fall into that category, but Owens simply wore 44 in high school, and that's really why he wanted it there at Syracuse. And they run the starting tailback, Drummond, and he ran hard into Bauer's arms. One of the things that Syracuse has done here in the first half well is really spread their formations out. They've gone with a lot of three wide out sit form uh, formations, and then either they'll run the ball inside on the draw, or McPherson has just been dropping back and dumping the ball off to any one of those three wide receivers. Important series for the Penn State defense. Well, Eric Parsegan on hand for a celebration of the early 60s back there at Northwestern. Not much to celebrate this afternoon with Michigan State winning that. McPherson had a lot of time. Throws to the sideline and it's caught over there on that side. Appeared to be a first down as they go again against Kevin Woods on the wow. Eddie Johnson side. No Ranger says hi -o Orange Men. And that's a major league throw there by McPherson. That ball was on a frozen rope about 40 yards to the outside. Here's the last part of it. Low trajectory and threw it beautifully because he was well covered by Woods, number two. You know, Coach Rose of Miami, he also said this Kane, big time wide receiver. He said that that's the one player that's going to surprise everybody when they see Syracuse for the first time. He said he hurt us a lot here. So Tempson with that speed will bring back the punt. Gardner to try and Gardner a little bit shaky in the pregame warm-ups. I know the coach McPherson has changed punters in games before, so they'll be paying attention to this. Down by 20, you never know. They might come after one, too. They're going to set the return. Great punt that time. No, oh, he got that one off and coached back to the 11-yard line. Here comes Tempson on the reverse. Into the middle and down at the 25. 54-yard punt with an 8-yard return. We'll be right back. Well, Auburn, the fifth-ranked team in the country, has avoided an upset against Georgia Tech. Auburn was trailing in this game, and with 24 seconds to go, the Tigers had a touchdown pass from Jeff Berger to Lawyer Tillman to win it over Tech. They tack on another touchdown as well to end the game, and Auburn stays unbeaten on the year. Let's go back to Brenton Pat. All right, Jim, but we have the upset brewing here. And that margin of score has to be very surprising. The Nittany Lions having a very rough afternoon in Syracuse. He can't seem to get on his feet. Been 17 long, frustrating years since Syracuse has beaten Penn State in a football game. Blair Thomas blasting his way to the 30-yard line. There's Bavaro, 59, bringing him down. The one thing we haven't seen much from Penn State is, is the ability to get Blair Thomas out in the open field. I think, still think, they run better screens than anybody in America, but we haven't really seen them use that much here in the first half. Roundtree and Alexander are the wide men. There's the fullback going out to that wing. Well, 
let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Award. And those players have been singled out for outstanding performance in team contributions and academics. And the leadership winners are Marcus Henderson from Penn State. He's a marketing major from Aliquippa. And Daryl Johnston from Syracuse. He's an economics major from Youngstown, New York. And Toyota, don't check any amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Big third and short here for Penn State. They need to keep this drive alive. So they put in Sean Borowski to add a little extra blocking strength here. Green for the first down. They took him outside away from Gregory. Did you notice that? They want a part of the middle of that defense that time. They want to step outside against it, and they got the first down. Ball is open to 35. Oh, they moved the chains out to the 37-yard line. Matt Kisner brings the Nittany lines up. On first down, wanted round three, and he overthrew him. Kisner keeping the ball high so far. Well, welcome, those of you who've been watching Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Nebraska leading by a couple of touchdowns here in Syracuse, along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. I'm Brent Musburger. The defending national champions of Penn State with possession, but trailing by 20 points. Syracuse scored on the first play of the game, an 80-yard bomb. Two touchdown passes. Here's Thomas trying to bounce outside against that Syracuse defense, and David Bavaro, the brother of Mark Bavaro, would not let him. Here's how we got to where we are in this game. Moore catching an 80-yarder and going the distance on the first play from scrimmage in this game. Then it was Vesseling who hammered a 37-yard field goal the next time they touched the ball. They made it 13 when he kicked a 35-yarder. And then on a big third down, touchdown pass at 29 yards. The wide receiver came, and that's how we got to 20 nothing. This is third and 11 now for Penn State. Green, the fullback, in motion. And Kisner, under pressure, will not get it off. Rob Burnett and Ted Gregory come in. The second sack of the game, and there's the mighty nose man, number 93. 17 years of frustration. Now, here is Tommy Kane's touchdown, Pat. And Tommy Kane was very well covered, actually. It was double coverage there from the Penn State defense, but he goes up and makes a tremendous diving catch for the easy score. And Klaus hammers the punt deep to Kane. Tommy turns upfield and gets to the 30-yard line, where he is down. A 53-yard punt by Klaus and an 11-yard return. So those of you who have been watching Oklahoma State and Nebraska, let's send you back to Vern Lundquist. And those of you who are watching Syracuse over Penn State, we'll take a break and be right back. The last time they went 6-0 was 1959. That's a magical year here in Syracuse because the Orangemen won the national championship. And Pat Hayden at the top of this broadcast, I said to you, is this team for real? I think uh, I said I thought they were a top 20 team. I'm going to amend that. They may very well be a top 10 team. This defense is sensational. Penn State is not as strong as they were a year ago, but it's still a very good football team. And they're not out of this one yet either. They're trailing by 20, however. They've got to get on track. Need Kisner to bring the ball down a little bit on his passes. Oh, they quickly get it outside to Drummond. Drummond gets the corner. Nice run for a first down, 14 yards. Next week, we'll get an opportunity to check in on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against Pat Hayden's former school. USC Trojans, 1.30 Eastern Time. Please note that earlier starting time. I know many of you have become accustomed to the 2.30 Eastern start on CBS. We'll move that up an hour because of the World Series, possible conflict if they go to a game six. So we'll start at 1.30 Eastern Time, USC and, and Notre Dame. They send the slot man out to the right, Glover, Kane outside him. 
run the fullback, Johnston, straight ahead. Well, you know, it's so difficult for Joe Paterno to get his defensive corners to play pass coverage when you have to defend the option because when a team runs the option as Syracuse is, the corners and the defensive backs have to come up and support. <laughs> then you got to play pass defense. I just had a little signal that Joe's. You think he doesn't think McPherson's going to pull up and throw it this time? Stay back. <laughs> it's all sophisticated, folks. It's all computers, and they flash numbers and yards. <laughs> we used that signal back in the sandlots in Montana. We're second down now. Does a great job, doesn't he? He was right on the money, too. There's the first down to Kelly. Paterno knew it was coming, and they still couldn't stop it, and there's a penalty flag now. Well, we sort out the penalty. Let's get downstairs to John Dockery. Doc? Thank you, Brent. It was almost 17 years ago to the day that Paul Valesa was the quarterback of the last Syracuse team to beat Penn State, and Paul, has this surprised you today's game? No, not really. Our guys have been playing with a lot of confidence, and I knew with the hometown support they'd play hard today, and... Uh, good football players in the program and uh, I think our program's coming back and we've got it to where we want it now. 17 years is a long time not to beat an opponent. What happened? Well I think there was a lot of transition in our program and that was in a very difficult time and I'm not sure our people knew what what they wanted to do with the program but now they do. We've got a great facility. Commitment's been made. Like I say we got good players and uh, we got it going again. The 17 year old drought may be over Brent. Now back up to you. Yeah sure do have it going again. Another 15 yards there. A little personal foul tacked on at the end of that reception. So the ball is spotted inside the 30. Time left in the first half. Syracuse on the move again. McPherson keeps it and I'll tell you Scott Cobb 63 came at him strongly through that hole. It was a so, late hit. Uh, that's what the penalty was all about Brent. There is Kelly catching the ball and there is uh, Woods. Well, Woods came in number two. It was late. It certainly wasn't very hard. So we'll take a break and be right back to the Carrier Dome. Pat, there are some marvelous scenes in here for basketball, but I didn't expect to see one for football. And like I said, if they get this thing rolling and get this program 6-0, 7-0, this is going to be a very, very tough place for the opposition to play. Look at these folks. A little bit of an orange sea here in Syracuse this afternoon. You could feel it when we arrived in this town. You know, we went into a team meeting yesterday, Brent, and I just sensed there was something special in the eyes of the Syracuse team uh, yesterday. Very determined bunch, embarrassed over the record. Well, something special for your eyes at halftime. Jim Nance will be along with all the scores and highlights on the Prudential College Football Report. 11 yards to go for the first down. Drummond on that far side, and he gets down inside the 15-yard line. McPherson's got the Orangemen rolling again. That's an 18-yard game. And McPherson's done just a marvelous job of mixing it up. He'll go downfield to Kane. Then he hits his tight end, Kelly, and come back to Drummond, number 36, out of the backfield. Now, there are three inside linebackers this time by Penn State. Nobody was out there in the flat. And that's why Drummond made the uh, easy catch for the first down. Two timeouts remaining for Syracuse. Now the ball is down around the 13-yard line, so they can get one first down without scoring. But I'll tell you, Syracuse will gladly settle for a field goal in this situation as Drummond bangs down close to the five. They'll want to run the clock out with whatever they do. They won't want to give Paterno a chance to return a kickoff. Well, we got a timeout here, and let's take a look at these two fine schools, Penn State and Syracuse. Well, Pat, Syracuse with one timeout, but the point I want to make is that 23 is an important number as opposed to 20. I'm, You know, they would love to have a touchdown, don't misunderstand, but the one they do not want to give up down here is the field goal. Quarterback Don 
Sean McPherson passes for two touchdowns and runs here for the third. The senior from West Hempstead, New York. Ordinarily, in most options, you want the quarterback to run, but not with Syracuse. When he options the ball, you have to get on him right now. It's not like defending Oklahoma. He's their best ball carrier. And Fessling trying to keep that streak alive. Who knows? He may break the Alabama record here this afternoon, the way that scoreboard is lighting up. Brett, you're going to see the strong safety, Brian Chisborne, number 28, run up to take the pitch man, Drummond. But really, when you're defending this particular option, you got to take McPherson right now. 197 consecutive extra points for Vesling, as McPherson three times gives him an opportunity here, and doesn't he love it? <laughs> he uh, has a brother who's a fine middleweight boxer who's here this afternoon watching. His father also fought professionally. He has another brother who played football with the San Diego Chargers. We're talking about a young man with good athletic breeding. When you see the C on his jersey, he's one of the three captains. Tells you a little something about him. He's the first quarterback that's been a cap captain since uh, Dick McPherson's been the coach. And the reason he came to Syracuse is that Coach McPherson said, you can play quarterback. He said, I've got no hang-ups about a black quarterback. You come up here and we'll give you a chance. And Don McPherson has made it pay off brilliantly. Again, right down the line. He's got 4-4 speed. And again, like I say, he's been dropping back and throwing the ball so much, you don't see this kind of versatility in many quarterbacks where they can give you the speed on the corner and then deliver the long ball like he did on the first play. And New York Giant general manager George Young said, I want to see McPherson. He said, I've heard a lot about him. He said, I know he's high on the NFL scouting charts, but I'd like to take a look at him. And he's getting an eye for me this afternoon. Well, they'll bring it out now. That's Thompson, the freshman. The strike is settled, but remember, one more week of replacement football. We'll take the air at 12.30 Eastern time, and speaking of Young, who's right down the press box row from us, the Giants at 0-4, and he said tomorrow is critical for us. Now, that's our early games, and you can see that also on the menu tomorrow, the Giants are over at Buffalo. I want to tell you, that is a big, big game for the Giants. They go to 0 and 5. It could be a long season. So we'll start our coverage tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time. Now they bring Alexander around, end around play this time, and they get out to the 34 yard line. And a penalty marker on the carpet. Brent, if Penn State's going to have a chance to come back in the second half, the offensive line is really going to have to regroup at halftime because they have been dominated by the defensive front of Syracuse. They're not staying on their blocks. You can see the number of plays they've had in those drives, too. Twice it's been three and out against this Syracuse defense, not giving them a chance to get out of the blocks. Personal foul on the defense. Personal foul on the offense during the play. The offset, replay. No oh, little do over here with 23 seconds to go. Pat, what's your feeling about uh, oh Wake Forest down? Was that a final I saw, boys? I, yeah, Michael Burks, our producer, says yes, it was, and so they lose for the first time. Pat, I was going to ask you about Matt Kisner, your observations about his passing here in the first well, half. Well, you mentioned it earlier. He's throwing the ball high. I think sometimes when you're quarterback and you get so concerned about a rush, you unload the ball earlier than you really should. I think he's probably rushing himself. He's two of eight for six yards and one interception. And that interception was down in the end zone. That shut off the best drive. And down at the 25-yard line down there. I'll tell you that Rob Burnett and Paul Praise, we've talked a lot about Gregory, but the tackles outside of him, putting on good pressure also here for the Orange men. I am really impressed with this defensive front four of Syracuse. They really get up field. You know, a lot of defenses will just kind of read blocks, read and react. They have a different philosophy. There's just a charge up field. What Penn State has to do, though, is to try to get him off balance, run some traps, go on long counts, perhaps a screen or two. 
to figure it out at halftime, I guarantee you. Joe Paterno was talking to number 27 whom we just sent out of the field. That's a freshman. You know that Joe is upset when he starts featuring freshmen here in this game. He had Thompson return to kickoff. Now he's got Gary Brown out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, out on the field. You know, Joe Paterno, though, give him some credit. He's been one of the coaches that's been a great adjustment coach over the years. He's been one of those guys who's been able to go in at halftime and solve some problems. Well, he's got 27 <laughs> points worth the problem. Yeah, I didn't think he'd do it today, but... <laughs> I should say Brown, the freshman who just came in the game, he got the handoff, but Kisner carried out the fake so well that he took a blow back there from Wooden teed off on him. Four seconds to go. Now we've got a timeout. And, you know, we talk about great running backs. How about Jim Nance? Do you remember him? The great success he had up here at Syracuse. He played here in the early 60s, 11th on their all-time rushing list. Then after he finished here at Syracuse, of course, he went on to the Boston Patriots and led the AFC in rushing for a couple of years. He suffered a serious stroke, however, a couple of years ago, and had an opportunity to ask him why he selected Syracuse. In 1957, when I was in high school, back in Indiana, Pennsylvania, I had to be watching television one day, and had Syracuse had to be the, the game I was watching. And I saw this great running back by the name of Jimmy Brown just running over everybody. Me being a running back myself in high school, I said, that's where I'm going to go to, that's where I'm going to go to school. I made my mind at that point that I was going to go to Syracuse. And we're happy to report that that rehabilitation is coming along and Nance able to walk now. He lives in the Boston area and Jim, I'm sure you're watching Syracuse. You can be proud of your alma mater here this afternoon and we want to wish you the best of luck. Ted Gregory, the nose man, limped off the field before this play. They drop it off. There is a penalty flag down. Blair Thomas busting free at the 45 for two more yards. There is a penalty marker down. It's a 13 yard gain. Now the officials are going to signal that that penalty is going to go against Penn State. So the clock will run out. The biggest play of the game, it was the first play from scrimmage. McPherson with first down, rolling out to the right, and they sent Rob Moore, the freshman from Hempstead, New York, on a fly pattern over the middle. The safety fell down, and Moore raced into the end zone, an 80-yard touchdown. Jim Nance will be back with a college football report after this message in a word from your local station. But this is biggest game, and a few moments ago, he spoke to John Dockery. Coach, you said your team was ready, but this ready? Gee, I, 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 they're, off the, they're off the wall. They really are. I think they're playing great. They must look great. They look great from where I am. They're really executing, I think. Why are you dominating? Well, uh, we'll have to look at the film tomorrow. No, I just think, I think we're playing great. I really do. I think we're playing great. And I just, but all we got to do is keep this thing going. We're not going to change the doggone thing. Emotion, maturity, and staying after is what it's all about right now. It's beautiful. Okay, Coach, good luck. Okay. A few years ago, Syracuse upset Nebraska. The Cornhuskers then were ranked number one in the country. And on the coach's wall, the New York Times story the following day after that. And I dare say if this keeps up, he'll have a second story on that wall. Wesleyan kicking it off. Blair Thomas will let it go in the end zone and out. So it'll come out here on the 20-yard line. We want to find out about Gregory who limped off the field. Doc, what's the status of the nose man? Let me tell you, Brent, he limped off the field. They were concerned, but it's just a strain in his left leg. He is available to play and probably will play. Ted Gregory, now back to you. All right, and so... Penn State trailing 27 to nothing. And very important for the Penn State offensive line to do something right now, because this sets the tone for the second half. They've got to take control, but it's going to be a much longer second half. Big difference in the performance of the two quarterbacks here so far. Blair Thomas comes out behind the right side, and Derek Ward, 52, hammered him down. 
you know, blocking people is nothing more really than just a lot of emotion. And again, all the emotion is on the defensive side of the ball for Syracuse. You don't have to be a great uh, finesse guys when you're blocking. Just stay on your block and give Blair Thomas a chance. Holmes, who came up on that previous hit, was also there on coverage. He's a junior out of Burlington, New Jersey. And, uh, Pat, I guess my question would be to you, a former quarterback, would the Penn State staff ever think about looking at a young quarterback in this situation, well, or will they let Kishner continue? I think they'll give him two or three drives, and he doesn't, if he doesn't generate any offense, then they'll make the switch. Round three and Alexander are his wide men. Pressure, round three, out of bounds. There was heavy pressure on Matt Kisner, who was down at the 11-yard line, and Paul Fraze coming in to make the hit on the quarterback. The left defensive tackle got good pressure that time on Kisner. And again, Syracuse will get good field position. So it's three downs and out with Klaus Punny. by Kane. 37-yard <laughs> punt. And it'll be first down for Kane and the Syracuse offense with Auburn rolling. LSU big over Kentucky at home. They did it during the daylight down there. It's Clemson beating Duke. Duke's played well this year. Jimmy Johnson forcing Clemson's hand a little bit, yeah. saying, I want to get the big bit. The Orange Bowl folks were telling me before the game started, Miami will have to earn it. So I feel that there's a uh, a little pressure, a little leverage being exerted. They've here beaten some the pretty good teams line. this year, though, Miami has. Yes, they have. We had a great game there. Come back against Florida State a few weeks ago. So here's first down now for Syracuse. Drummond out to the 44-yard line. Speaking of bull bids, Syracuse goes 6-0, and and they'll have a big one coming up in a couple of weeks against Pittsburgh. They could roll toward a good bull bid this year. Every series becomes important for Penn State when you're down 27-0 and all the emotion is on the other side of the ball. The defense has to bow the next, force a punt, and perhaps even try to block it. McPherson was not yelling at one of his players. He was upset with an official. He, he thought there was a late hit. He was bellowing at that official for not throwing the flag. When we think about Syracuse, why don't we check out their schedule? Now, Colgate at Pittsburgh, Navy, Boston College here in West Virginia. Their biggest game left is Pittsburgh. Well, this, this team, if they could get past Pittsburgh, you never want to speculate about a schedule, but I'm telling you, they could go the distance. Well, they're as good, they're as, good as everybody on that schedule, anybody on that schedule. No reason why this school shouldn't have a good football team. There's a great facility up here. On that option, great pitch to Drummond for the first down. He goes airborne on the far side. You know, there's just something about the emotion of college football. You can see these guys just want it more than Penn State. Even though they're ahead 27-0, they come right back. They smell a kill here. 84 Karpinski is on the bad ankle. Didn't really make the play on the quarterback. Good decision to pitch the ball. And Drummond did come up limping. And he left Pat after that, and Owen stepped in for him. So they split number 44. Now they're moving back to the tailback spot. Here is Drummond on the sideline. Great run for the first down. Syracuse marching again. There's the protection from McPherson. He's a dangerous runner. about eight or nine yards before Kirkendall hammers him to the ground. Now here's the assistants on the sideline discussing things with the orange crush defense over here. I think what they're concerned about is actually the fullback there coming out and going down the sidelines. They're trying to set up a big play. Just want to make sure the defensive coverage stays deep. Don't give up the big one when you're up by 27. Yeah, 
that circle over there with all the lines coming out, running that pattern back across the field to that sideline. That would be green. They've been lining him up on a wing most of the game. They've only got one yard to go for first down after that fine run by McPherson. They flare Owens. Here he comes. And he beats the defensive man. Gets inside the 20 for another first down. Cobb wraps him up. That's a 14-yard gain. Owens, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's the heart of Penn State country. But he was such a great high school athlete that the local radio station over there carries all of the Syracuse games because they want to keep track of Michael Owens. And again, if you just joined us, his brother at 6'9", one of the most highly sought-after high school basketball players in the country. He fell victim to Proposition 48, had to get his studies up before he could become eligible. Johnston straight ahead into that defense. Penalty flag is thrown by the umpire. You know, again, we haven't talked much about Daryl Johnson, Brent, but he's been leading the way an awful lot today. Terrific blocker. And you need that out of the fullback position. You know, Pat, I, I made a statement, and really I should follow up on it, about this facility. If you recruit a running back down in Florida, and there are parts of Florida where a lot of northern families have gone, and they do not at all object when their sons come back up here to school. If you bring that young man up to Syracuse and the bad winters they have, but you show him the dome inside here, he has to say, well, this isn't bad. I, I, I will play inside. So they have that going for them as a recruiting tool. They can use the dome. Now, this school also has taken in an enormous amount of money with its basketball team. I mean, they put 33,000 in here. They went to the finals last year before losing that great game to Indiana. We are talking about a school that's got some money now in its athletic program. They've got a great tradition up here. And this is Owens again. He gets inside the 25. You know, you ever wonder how many domes are used in college football? I'll tell you, there are more than you might think, folks. We got the carrier here. How about Northern Arizona? That's the Sky Dome. Northern Iowa, the Uni Dome. Idaho State. They've got the Mini Dome. And of course, Tulane, the Superdome, Minnesota, the Metrodome, and Houston down to the Astrodome. Those are the well known domes down there. So we've got seven schools with a roof. The well known domes? The well known domes. Talking about the Florida youngsters, there are six Florida players on this Syracuse team. So this dome been a factor. Here comes Owens. He's tripped up. That was a nice tackle that time by Shizmar. I'll tell you, one of the other things they, they'll do when they recruit players is bring out this tape of this game and show them what it's like with 50,000 people inside the, yeah. inside the dome. Now, Joe has dominated the East. Everyone knows that for 22 years, and he's beaten up today. He's got a lot of major injuries on this Penn State team. I doubt that he will use that for an alibi. Knowing Joe Paterno after the game, he will praise Syracuse to the skies, as he did at halftime, but he will not let his players forget this next year when they have a little rendezvous in Happy Valley if this keeps up. Third and 13, and here we're, is where Tommy Kane has done a sensational job today. He's over on the right, Pat, and the whistle sounded before the snap. Too much time. You know, one thing about the Dome, they shocked Penn State so quickly with points I think the crowd was stunned. It hasn't been nearly as noisy as I was led to believe because the game really hasn't been that close at any point. You know, now uh, Syracuse goes back to, what, third and 18, but they have converted three of these third and longs. This roof will be familiar to fans of the World Series when it gets going. That's that same Teflon-covered cloth, really. And you can lose a ball up in there. And, you, and you'll see that tonight in the Metrodome. I think the Cardinals might need a little adjustment period. It's third and 18 now for Syracuse. He's going for Kane. Touchdown. Good call, Pat Hayden.
no free safety in the middle of the field. When you run a post pattern, it's really not the defensive corner's responsibility. The free safety is supposed to be there. Kane beats his man quickly inside for the easy score. Again, on third and 18, you have to have a center fielder. Now Vesseling moving a step closer. Pulled that one a little bit, but it was still good. 16 years of frustration coming to an end here this afternoon. For 16 years, Penn State didn't beat Syracuse. They hammered them. 30 to 9, the average score. But throw it out the window. Today is a new era, and Syracuse playing like they've been born again. 34 to nothing. CBS Sports presents College Football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Michelob Light, when the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. And by Delta Airlines, we love to fly, and it shows. The most points Syracuse ever scored against Penn State until today was 28 back in 1965. And at 8.58 left in the third, it is 34 to nothing. close to the 35-yard line. Brent, what happened here on the touchdown play, on the upper right corner, Marcus Henderson is the free safety. Now, he is supposed to cover back here, but he goes too flat, and then Kane runs the post pattern right behind him. He's supposed to be up that hash mark, but you see he gets too far outside. He's expecting an inside route on, a, on like an in-cut, but Kane goes over the top. And for the day, Kane with five catches for 98 yards and two touchdowns. He caught those passes on third and 28 and third and 18. Two long third downs for touchdowns to Kane. Now Kisner, that pass was high to Coates. He did yank it back down. The one thing about Penn State teams, I've seen them over the years, is that these guys do not quit. They do not give up. This is not their kind of game, obviously, when they're down by 34. But the worst thing you can say about an athlete is that he quit, and Penn State is not like that. It comes from that man. Timpson and Coates are the wide men. Green set in front of the tailback. Crush defense, Bavero, number 59, gets up from the bottom of that pile. This, that is Mark Bavero's brother. And you know, on a third and five or four situation, this is where, again, you want to get the ball to Blair Thomas on a passing route, perhaps. They threw him one pass early. He dropped it. They haven't gone back to him. Yeah, I think Kisner is so afraid, Brent, of getting the ball picked off, he's leading the receiver too far outside. You've got to take some chances at this point. Klaus to punt away again. Three downs and out. It has been that way several times. And this will be Klaus's sixth punt. and it takes a Penn State bounce down there around the 10-yard line. 51-yard punt. Not good field position for Syracuse. 7.23 to go in the third period. And unbeaten Syracuse impresses a television audience as they run it up on Penn State. It's 34-0. A quarterback change in the offing for Penn State is sophomore Tom Bill begins to loosen up on that far sideline, taking some snaps, and while you're away at commercial, he was also throwing a few practice passes. McPherson shakes a tackle. He wants another one. He wants more, more, 
drops it. That time, Dwayne Downing stayed with the wide receiver, who already has gone 80 yards for a score. Same play they opened the game with. They came down the line, faked the option. Chismar, 28, actually gets fooled again, but Downing, number four, makes the play. That ball is well thrown, really still should have been caught. I made the point early. Syracuse will not call the dogs off here this afternoon. 17 years of frustration, I can understand. There's a lot of young athletes in the East Coast they want to impress today. Johnston. Coach Mack once assisted with the coaching of the Cleveland Browns and a former friend of his, Lou the Toe Groza, watching today. Easy for Michigan State. Now remember, they're tied with Indiana for the lead in the Big Ten. In case you missed it last night, Indiana went into the Metrodome and beat the Gophers in Minneapolis. We'll see Notre Dame and USC next week. Ohio State trying to bounce back from that embarrassment of a week ago, but maybe that Indiana bunch is better than we thought. Quick kick. That's a weapon used frequently by Syracuse. Henderson giving chase. He'll just let that ball roll dead down by the 20-yard line. He touched it. He touched and it. That, if he did, it's Syracuse ball. The 68-yard quick kick by Daryl Johnston, the fullback, pays off. Unbelievable. You have to get away from the ball. That's what Joe Paterno was saying right now. Henderson just got frustrated. We practiced this yesterday in practice. They've done it before. I think it's a terrific call when you're backed up. That's generally when you use it. Now, number three, Henderson, really, he should just get away from it. Comes around. He tries to put a hit on Drummond, and then his foot touches it. And then heads up there by uh, Syracuse. Drummond makes the recovery. Yeah, I want to tell you, Drummond, a key man in that alignment, too. Because remember, they must switch the fullback and the tailback to set it up in that sequence. So a first down. Ball's at the 20-yard line. There's McPherson, and he keeps it. He's a great runner. He'll score. today. We've seen McPherson drop back and throw the ball long. We've seen him throw it over the middle to his tight end. There he faked the option to Drummond. And that was the key there. Let him get this extra point could tie Alabama's record. 199 and counting. As Besley hammers in another extra point. It's 41 to nothing. Remarkable two-play sequence, Pat. Daryl Johnson is ordinarily the fullback, but on the quick kick situation, just as you said, Randy, lined up at tailback, and there's the pitch. We saw what happened on the other end. And then he comes back. Now he's lined up at fullback on the touchdown and makes a sensational block. Remember, we talked about Daryl Johnson. His stats don't show up too often after the game, but very important for their win. It's a nice block there on Karpinski. The guy does a lot of different things to help his team win. Watch the fake on the pitch there. That takes Chismore out of the way. Great fake by McPherson. And he outruns people into the end zone. We've still got six minutes and 16 seconds left in the third period. You know, I, I think uh, there comes a time when Dick McPherson has to call the dogs off. Remember, they have to play these guys every year. It's been a long time. Yeah, we're talking about the Orange Bowl. I gotta believe Syracuse suddenly <laughs> jumps up into the running. They're staying unbeaten and they're doing it in impressive fashion here on television. The front
Rushman are back to return the ball for Paterno again. And Fessling drives it out of the end zone. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John. Thank you, Brent. I'm here with Arthur Hertz from the Orange Bowl. Arthur, Jimmy Johnson at halftime told us that if he's 9-0 on November 21st, bowl day, that he will accept a bid. He doesn't want to be put in that either-or situation. What's your reaction to that? Well, by that time, we'll know whether it's Oklahoma or Nebraska. And we'll know what our side of the matchup is, and we're going to go to the team that we feel will be in position to play for the national championship. And if the team selection committee feels Miami is the one, then they'll pick him. If not, we'll, wait. we'll pick the team we think will, will play for the championship. Okay, Brent, now back up to you. All right, John, thank you. Right now we have a new quarterback in for Penn State. This is Tom Bill, the sophomore from New Jersey. Coach Paterno making some substitutions here, and Bill to throw it on first down. He wanted round three incomplete. Welcome those of you who are watching Nebraska hammer Oklahoma State. Sorry to say we can't give you anything much closer here. In fact, we got a shocker for you. It is Syracuse all over Penn State, 41 to nothing. That's right, 41 to nothing. Penn State has just changed quarterbacks. Tom Bell will be taking the snap here from the center. And they run Brown, the freshman, and he bolts free. Brown's on his way. the distance for the touchdown. Gary Brown bolts 80 yards for Penn State's first touchdown here this afternoon. Now here's how we got to this point. Let's bring you up to date because Syracuse, it was lightning. First play from scrimmage, 80 yards for a touchdown. Then the kicking game took over for a while. Bessling first made a 37. He came right back and he hit a second one after that on their third drive. It was 13 nothing after Syracuse had handled the ball three times. Then Kane made a great 29 yard catch on third and long. It was 20 to nothing. McPherson on the option, six yards, 27 nothing. Kane again on third and long, 34 nothing. And then McPherson on the 20 yard option. And Penn State with each adding the extra point gets on the board and it is 41 to 7. Now this Pat Hayden was the last Syracuse score. And the key was the block by the fullback number 32 Daryl Johnson and then the fake by McPherson. You see the strong safety Chismar comes up McPherson fakes him out takes the pitch and then into the corner of the end zone. He's in a marvelous job of faking. And Penn State's only score came on this play it was Gary Brown the freshman off tackle got a good block inside by the fullback on the linebacker Bavaro he made a great move on Marcus Paul number 10 froze him now Gary Brown is 5'10 190 he's out of Williamsport Pennsylvania so I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of Brown and Thompson the other freshman running back the rest of the way back Total domination by the Syracuse team. The thing that surprises me, Brett, is that the nature of the uh, the Syracuse offense. Ordinarily, when you have a defense as good as Syracuse and as dominating as they are, you have a very conservative offense. You don't want to lose it on offense. But Syracuse is different. They have big play offensive capability. I wonder if they'll try an onside kick right here. 557. Tarassi's got the uh, kick team huddled there at the 30-yard line. They break out of that after he makes the call. They, they do not have the onside return team the hands team is not out on there. the field. So he could try to get it 10 yards here. Let's see what happens. Well, they like to take it deep. And here's Owens from the one. Coming to the near side. And out around the 28. Of course, we'll remind everybody again that we'll start our NFL coverage at 12.30 Eastern Time. Then New Orleans at Chicago. I know the Bears are 4-0, but they'll have their hands full. That New Orleans team has looked good the last couple of weeks. The Rams play St. Louis in San Francisco and the Giants against Buffalo. A critical day for the Giants who find themselves 0-4. And we'll try to find out why didn't the owners let the veterans come back and play this week. Now, a little bit of a controversy. We'll check into that at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. Here it's 41-7, an impressive showing by unbeaten Syracuse. Whistle blew on the snap. Yeah. 
And Brett, this is a tremendous moment for the seniors of this Syracuse team who have been really humiliated and dominated the past three years by Penn State. Guys like Don McPherson in the center, John Garrett, tight end Pat Kelly. It means an awful lot your last time around to beat Penn State. You know, one of Coach Max coordinators, Bill Maxwell Jr., one of his assistant coaches, Bill Maxwell, and his son will marry Coach Max's daughter on February 20th. So Janet McPherson and Bill Maxwell All Jr. Start on the offense. To be married, and uh, I said, why that date? And he said, that's after the recruiting's <laughs> over. <laughs> so, they going to what, raise the defensive coordinator? Oh, uh, yes. He's one of the most popular football coaches I've been around. He was out shaking hands, firing up the town yesterday, and he sure responded. Here's Owens, the freshman, sophomore, trying to get outside. Got across midfield, 28 yards. We talked about the difference between Michael Owens and the starting tailback, Drummond. Big guard here, big block was by the left guard, John Flannery, who opened up the uh, hole on the on the uh, draw play here. But Owens is just a natural. You don't uh, teach this thing. Got a good block by Chris Barnes, the fullback, number 39. Then just uses some speed. A couple guys have an angle on him. That's why he didn't score. that Penn State defense on that trip. Well, Joe Paterno hasn't had many afternoons like this. Well, you know, he was talking yesterday about how things really are getting a little bit more difficult at Penn State. You know, Syracuse is getting a player or two, but they changed quarterbacks. McPherson just come out. I think it's Todd Philcox. Let's see if that's who it is. Yes, it is. He's a junior from uh, Norwalk, Connecticut. Down there in the Westport Western area. Good high school player. Let's see how he does. He's 6'4 junior. That's Kelly, the tight end in motion. And Owen straight ahead. Oh, USC and Washington. Go to the half with the Trojans, whom we'll have next week against Notre Dame. In control, 16-7. They go to the half on that game. Fine quarterback out at USC, Rodney Pete. Very good thrower and runner as well. At 1.30 Eastern time, again, is our start time next Saturday for that game from South Bend. Well, I say for all those guys on USC who go into Notre Dame for the first time, that is a trip. You'll always remember that one, believe me. Yeah, you remember this fan in the broadcast, too. That's a great, great setting in South Bend. Love to be going back. Official sounds and... Uh, Boy, the referee wisely stepped in there and saved Phil Cox a hit on that. And give Chismar some credit, number 28. He pulled off, and in a game when you're down 41-7, the frustration sometimes gets the better of you. But he pulled off. Delay a game on the offense. Still well, we've got a moment. Let's go to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brent. I'm in the press box with a man whose name is synonymous with the glory days of Syracuse football, Ben Swartzwalder. And Ben, does this team compare with some of the great teams that you had back in the 50s and 60s? I didn't get the first. Does this team compare with some of the great teams you have? Well, the way they're looking today, they're, they're something. They're really something. I, I, I'm so happy to see what they're doing. What does this do for the Syracuse program? Well, it gives a big lift, you know. Uh, we, we haven't looked like this for, you know, even though our record is 5-0, we haven't been, this is something today. This is like magic, you know. 17 years of not beating Penn State is a long time. Brent, now back to you. All right, John, thank you. Phil Cox trying to scramble out of trouble that time. There is a penalty flag thrown on this play. Gee, Schwartzwalder, you think of him and Jimmy Brown coming over here. And the stories about Brown, I think all of us are aware how talented he was as a football player. But you should hear people talk about him as a lacrosse player. They say that he may have been the greatest lacrosse player that anybody ever saw. He was an All-American, I believe, lacrosse player. And I think he also could play a pretty mean game of basketball. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to guard him. Huh? I don't think I'd want to box the big fella either. 
Now, Penn State really ought to try to block this punt at this point. You know, Joe Assetti, who played against him when he was at Colgate, he's our director, and he says, hey, Jimmy was a pretty good baseball player, too. I think Joe was the catcher over there for the Red Raiders. For Not as good as our Joe Assetti, I bet. That's our guy down there calling the shots on the pictures. They get it off, and a fair catch by Timpson. They're at the 25-yard line. 32-yard punt. Well, we want to remind you that at the conclusion of this CBS Sports broadcast, we'll select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Big afternoon for Syracuse here. 16 years of frustration. They have not beaten Joe Paterno in Penn State since 1970. Came close two years ago, and they blew it in the last five minutes. They're making sure no chance to blow it this time. And Bill airs it out for Coates. Intercepted. Pull down there by Jeff Mangrum, the junior from Brunswick, Georgia. This is a frustration pass when you're down by such a large margin. You just hope something good happens. He's covered. Bill knows that he's covered, but he just wants to give his receiver a chance. I don't fault him for it. We've seen Tommy Kane do it for Syracuse all day long. Mangrum, actually Mangrum or Marcus Paul could either have made the interception, but Mangrum does the job. That's three turnovers for Penn State today and none for Syracuse. You no, know, a year ago, Penn State was plus 18 in the turnover department. This year, they're minus five now. Uh, you'll never get a Penn Stater to give up, though. This is too great a football program. This is Owens from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Do you think of Carlisle? Great Jim Thorpe's name comes to your mind right away. Yeah, very much like the Alabama game when Penn State played Alabama, we saw them the second game of their season. You know, I would disagree with that. I think that this is a much greater shellacking. If you go back in that Alabama game and take away about two or three plays, I think the Nittany Lions would have been right in the thick of it. I'm having a hard time picking out two or three here. Penn State's had a lot of players hurt since that time. I think they have nine different changes in the lineup since the Alabama game. Bill Cox in for play through behind Pat Davis, the tight end from Trenton, New Jersey. And you know, Penn State taking its second loss here today, and this is the tough part of the schedule. Look at the at Pittsburgh and Notre Dame still coming up down the road. And West Virginia, a very good defensive team. But if they can uh, just get through the season with two or three losses, they're still going to be a major factor in the bowl situation. Well, these, one of those games when a team comes of age, who would have believed that with about four minutes to go, Syracuse would turn it over to the second Ooh. string, and boy, what a lick that time by Chismar. Mm. Boy. This one will definitely hurt tomorrow. Remember, a little earlier, Chismar, he is the strong safety, but he's coming off the corner on the blind side. The back should pick him up. The fullback actually should step up and pick him up to that side. Phil Cox never had a chance. Ooh, I hate when that happens. They set the return. Timpson. Find a jitterbug away and cannot. A 41 yard punt and a one yard return. Let's get an update. Here's Jim Nance in New York, Jimmy. Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Ken Clark has scored another touchdown. It's 35 to nothing, Nebraska over Oklahoma State in the fourth quarter. Let's go back to Brent. So a day for blowouts in college football, if you will. 41-7 here, Syracuse over Penn State, and that's the time remaining in the third. And Brown 
raced 80 yards for Penn State's only touchdown, the ball carrier that time. And believe me, he draws fresh respect after that burst of speed. Talking about the Heisman Trophy, a young man who should not be overlooked, I think, because of what he represents in the game is Gordy Lockbaum of Holy Cross. You talk about a player who has done it all and been a good student in this one of those years when no one is walking away. I think everyone should think about his contributions, and Syracuse recruited him. Kind of an interesting score. Let me tell you that after this play. Dempsey. He has great speed, and he's down right there. They would not give him a chance. It is Dan Busey, linebacker out of Ohio. So those of you who've been watching earlier, Oklahoma State and Nebraska, let's send you back to Jim Nance in New York. 35 to nothing in Stillwater. Fourth quarter action has just begun as Ken Clark has scored his second touchdown of the game. And we'll take you out there for the finish of that game between the Cowboys and Cornhuskers after this message and a word from your local station. Gets the first down. You know, as we watch the freshman, uh, Gary Brown, Joe Paterno has done a, a much better job, I think, since about 1979, early 80s, of recruiting nationally. He's gone around, and Brown's from Pennsylvania, but Leroy Thompson, the other freshman running back from Knoxville, uh, he's gone uh, to Florida, to Kentucky. We now recruited some speed after he was out quick in the 79 Sugar Bowl by Bear Bryant's Alabama team. You know, I was impressed with the Texas defense last even though they gave up 44 to Oklahoma, and they're hanging in tough here against Arkansas down Little Rock. That's the end of the third quarter. We've come to the end of the third quarter here in the Carrier Dome. 41-7. College football returns after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. AC Delco, stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco parts. And by the Stanley Works. Stanley helps you do things right. It is rare for a school to crash into the top ten in both football and basketball. Think about that. When the basketball writers poll comes out, it will show Syracuse ranked number one as the preseason favorite. And with this convincing win, the Orange men have an opportunity to jump at least very close to the top ten. And the AP and the UPI, all the various college football ranking services. Now, this is the backup quarterback, Tom Bill, pulling out for Penn State. Hits Tempson. And Tempson slips down inside the 40-yard line. Marked out there on the 36, a 21-yard gain. Simpson dreams of running for the United States and Seoul, South Korea, and the Olympics. This is an opportunity for the Penn State the younger players, their second and third team offensive linemen and some of the backs, to get a chance to offer some opportunity to have some experience. It's an important as the season rolls along, particularly with all the injuries that Penn State has had. Good protection. Intercepted. Intercepted by David Bavaro. So the young Bavaro comes up with an intercepted pass and the fourth Penn State turnover. Big moment for number 59. It is just so tough to throw in these kinds of circumstances. Bill is just trying to force the ball inside. A deep, deep drop by Bavaro. Actually, sixth round tree was open behind him, but the linebacker did a nice job of stepping in front of it. He was back about 15 yards deep. No Todd Philcox, the junior. Don McPherson sits down, having been 14 of 19 for 271 yards, rushed for another 39. Folks, he threw for three and ran for two more touchdowns. What an afternoon for McPherson here in this blowout. And they run Byron Abraham, number 33. Speaking of basketball, Jimmy Beheim is with John Dockery. Let's go to Doc. Thank you, Brent and Jimmy. I mean, do these guys think they're, excuse us, these guys think that they're the basketball team ranked number one? <laughs> they're playing great football. It's great to see. I've been coming here 25 years, and this has just been a great day for Syracuse football and Syracuse University. What's the pressure of being number one? 
it's, it's there, and obviously it bothers you, John, but I, I'm kind of proud to be there, and hopefully uh, we're going to be able to maintain it. Although in college basketball, I don't know if there is a number one anymore. There's about 10 teams that think they're number one. All right, Brent, now back to you. John, uh, if you still hear me on the far side, ask Jimmy Beheim about the recruiting of Owen's younger brother. You know, I have to ask you about this. I know you're interested in, in the younger Owens, Michael Owens' brother. Sure. How is all that going? I understand he's an outstanding prospect. Well, he's a great player. He's an outstanding prospect, and we're happy that Michael's here. He seems to like it, but you never know in recruiting. It's got to be the right place for him, not just because his brother's here, but hopefully uh, he'll like us when it's all said and done, but you never know in recruiting. I understand that Michael Owens is doing pretty well today. That can't hurt the recruiting up here. Well, I'm here. I go to all the football practices just to make sure he's getting the plays down right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand this down to North Carolina and you. Good luck, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Okay, Brent. Uh, all right. Now, Owens in the game, folks, on this wishbone. He's over there. And he's got it. Here he comes. Here's Michael. And he didn't get wow. the job done that time. Boy, that was a good, strong tackle by Brian Chismar, the sophomore. So Michael Owens with a brother who is 6'9", also out of Carlisle. His brother does not play football. He concentrates solely on basketball. You see, Owens do a nice job of catching the ball today, too, Brent. I think he has two or three receptions. He did some magic with the ball after he caught it. But Chismar took him that time, and Ken Hawkins comes in to punt. So they'll let Hawkins punt here to Coates, and there are 10 men up on the line. Penn State showing the possibility of coming after this punt. Hawkins has a leg, I want to tell you. This will be a great view. Right down the middle, they pound it into him. There's the penalty marker. That's Coach. But the penalty marker is down. They come barreling into Hawkins. Yeah, one of the concerns they had with Hawkins, he is 6'7", was that he didn't punt well on Saturdays. He punts great on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, <laughs> but not very well on Saturdays. But Zott, number 79, runs right into him again. And you have to give it a chance when you're down by this kind of score. Gives it his best Lawrence Olivier, didn't On the defense. No, I, I'm going to tell you something. I really think in that situation, you have to protect the punter. When you when you come down the middle like that and that leg is up in the air, boy, that's a... I've seen a couple of punters' legs broken. In fact, I saw a college game yep. once in which a penalty flag wasn't thrown and the punter had a broken leg. I a kid out of Southern Cal thing. a few years ago that yeah. happened to him. Is that right? Look, look at Coach Mack down there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> think he hasn't been wired this week. Speaking of the Red Raiders... Joe Assetti will love that one. <laughs> well, Harvard and Gordy Lockbaum's team comes through. Now a third quarterback, Bill Shar. He's the freshman. I've heard a lot of good things about Shar. He's number 19. Chris Barnes. You think last night that Bill Shaw thought he'd get a chance to play against Penn State? I mean, the third team quarterback. Do you really think he was nervous last night and this morning? <laughs> he was hoping he'd be sitting right over there <laughs> watching McPherson lead him to a last second victory. This doesn't happen too often. Pat Davis is uh, the injured orangeman down on the field now. Well, Pat, what do you think this does to uh, Eastern football? Let's start with the East. Well, I think first it, we got a timeout, and we want to we want to come back and talk about that. We're going to take a break first, pay a few bills, then we'll come back. It's 41-7 right now, Syracuse. When the sun goes down, gonna light up the night. Silver label, red ribbon. Man, do you like shooting pictures in the Carrier Dome? Nod your head. Do you like it? Is it a good place for our photographers? <laughs> That's all right. They like it. Why not? How about you down the field, Skippy? Do you like it down here? He's too busy. Yeah. Skippy's always looking for the next great shot. <laughs> the stars of television, the cameraman. That's what the folks want to see, those great pictures, huh, Pat? Mm-hmm. They've gotten it today. Great place to shoot a game. You know, that block punt, I love the, the angle from right behind the punter that time. You can see the rush coming in. Char. 
Going to Abraham. Barrels for a strong first down. That's a 15-yard run. Frank, we were talking about what this does really to Eastern football, and I think one thing it does, it just makes it a little bit easier for Syracuse to start recruiting. Now, they've, they've picked off a guy or two from Penn State uh, in the past couple of years, but this is the kind of a, a game that you can build your program on. It makes it a lot easier to go into Pennsylvania and recruit. talk about the Heisman watch let's focus in on it here we've got a number of candidates it's wide open and at random before the day we said let's check in on three of them Tim Brown and Notre Dame he's a strong candidate now that's what he had done prior to today's game you can see so dangerous as a return man now today he returned a punt for another touchdown of 74 yards five touchdowns on the year so Tim Brown leads Notre Dame to a 35 to 14 win. So that's one of our strong candidates. I'll tell you about Lorenzo White here in a second. To swing it on out to Abraham. He breaks a tackle. Run out of bounds after he crosses midfield. Now Lorenzo White, the Michigan State running back. That's what he had done prior to today. He scores three touchdowns today and rushes for 187 yards against Northwestern in a 38 to nothing win. So Lorenzo's still in the chase. Now the third one, and we'll tell you about Gordy Lockbaum here in a moment. Shar eyeing the defense. Gordy Lockbaum of Holy Cross, a fine student, two-way player. That's what he had done. Note that he plays defense as well as offense, and today he scored four more touchdowns, 12 for the year, and he had one more sack of a quarterback. So write down Tim Brown, Lorenzo White, and Gordy Lockbaum because all three remain in the chase for the most coveted prize in college football, the Heisman Trophy. And Hawkins to punt it away. And you know, we talked about Blair Thomas actually running himself into contention the last four weeks. The Syracuse defense may have put a stop to that. Blocked. That time they get it. And the man who blocked it, number 75, Rip Schoenwolf, goes for a touchdown. A great moment for the junior out of Philadelphia. You can't advance a fumble in college football, but you can't a block punt. Schoenwolf is a backup defensive tackle. And he comes right up the middle. Good penetration inside, went right over the center, made the nice block, and it just kept on going. Showed a little athleticism picking it up. Got picked up a nice little block by Quintus McDonald and got a face mask as he was driven into the end zone. It's a nice play there by Schoenwolf. So Eric Eats to attempt the extra point. He's the senior from Winter Springs, Florida. And Lance Lonigan, number 15 out of Staples High School in Westport, will be his holder. He's one of the backup quarterbacks. There's Lonigan checking to see if Eats is ready. Got a bad snap, and he got it down well. Nice move by Lonigan. 41 to 14, 10 15 remaining. It's 41 to 14, Syracuse with 10 15. Let's see, was the cameraman up on a ladder? Or was he down <laughs> under? <laughs> it's got to be Skippy. No, Tarassi to kick it off for Penn State, and the onside kick return team is on the field for Syracuse. They have nine men up around midfield, and look at this trick maneuver, and Syracuse gets on it. They bust out of the huddle in a hurry. I saw Fresno State do that this year successfully. 
Isn't that great? Now Syracuse was ready. That's one we'd like to see again. There they go. <laughs> Charge. I'll tell you, very alert defense there. Wasn't it, though? It's got a nice little play. That was Daryl Johnston, that fullback, who wrapped it up. He's done all the small things and some of the large things here. Boy, with this performance by Syracuse, you sort of wonder what happens to their bull chances. How far do they move up here? Is Shar going to go long? Overthrows Glover. Well, let's find out. John dockery has got a guest who can tell us the answer. Doc? Brent, I'm glad you asked the question. Chuck Rowe from the Citrus Bowl is with me. And Chuck, coming into today's game, obviously Syracuse's stature, what it is is not what it is after the game. How did it change today? It changed dramatically. I think they went to the top of a lot of New Year's Day lists. They're certainly at the top of our list. But coming in, it was all Penn State. Most of the bowls, the 10 bowls here today, by the way, were looking at Penn State and not Syracuse. Oh, I think they were here to see what Syracuse was all about, and I believe they found out. I think uh, they impressed the whole country today. What about Penn State after today? Well, it's been uh, an off day for Penn State. Joe doesn't very often have an off day. I'm sure they're going to bounce back and, and be in somebody's bowl and possibly be back in the New Year's Day picture before the season's over. Well, thank you, Chuck, and good luck. Okay, Brent. Thanks, Doc. Abraham runs out of a shoe. Gets down to the 40-yard line. Invaluable experience for the backups for Syracuse, too, Brent. Again, they had those tough couple of head, uh, games ahead of them. Gives your, your regulars a chance to get off and rest. You know, we talk about the Heisman all the time. Isn't it fascinating that there's no quarterback on the list? Now, let's talk about the All-American quarterback, folks. Let's nominate this young man right here. This has been some performance today. That's what he did throwing. Remember, he also ran for two touchdowns, rushed for 39 more yards. He gained better than 300 yards passing and running, five touchdowns. And one of his backups throws a pass incomplete. Don McPherson, who wants to play in the NFL and he doesn't want to go in as a wide receiver or a defensive back, he wants to go in and get a shot as a quarterback. And I dare say someone scouting him today is going to come away with the opinion that he deserves a chance. He's that good. Well, the right kind of offense he can play. You I really bet. believe that. If a Bill Walsh type of offense, he could definitely play quarterback in the NFL. Escapability, isn't that one of the words Hank Stram invented? <laughs> is there such a word? Well, he's got it was good enough. Remember, twice on third and long, he put the ball in the end zone to Kane, and they, had both. Oh, and they just they had changed punters again. That's what they're doing. They both punters in at Hawkins once. Hawkins and Gardner, they weren't too sure who was supposed to punt this one. Yep, Gardner is going to throw a pass complete against the 10-man rush. But now, I don't think there's a penalty marker down. There's an injured player on the field. They were short of the first down. All sorts of problems. I, I hate to see that. I hate to see when you have somebody down 41 to 14 to be doing that. I can understand when the game's on the line. Well, let, 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 me, let me just throw out one point on that one. The last time they punted, it wound up being a touchdown. And maybe they said... Yeah, but we've seen them here go deep now and then the, the fake, uh, fake punt. I, I don't I, think... I said early. Yeah, you're Coach right. Mack is not going to call the goal. And I just disagree with it. You look at that man and you think he's in a dogfight. Folks, he's coasting home in this one. Well, we're glad to report that that young man from Penn State, Willie Thomas, was not hurt badly. Back up, defensive back, walked off the side of the field. Some of you folks uh, who may have joined us late who follow Penn State, Really, the die was cast in practice on Thursday when Eddie Johnson, their superb cornerback, pulled a hamstring muscle. He has not played at all, and Syracuse hit the Nittany Lions with an 80-yard pass for a touchdown on the first play from scrimmage. The game has not been the same since that first play. Also, their superb inside linebacker and the man who intercepted the last pass thrown by Vinny Testaverde in college football, Pete Giftopoulos. He is out because of a hand injury. They didn't have either of them. Trey Bauer's been in and out of the lineup all day today. So, so truly, this has not been a Penn State team even close to being at full strength here this afternoon. Brown, the freshman running back, is behind Bill. Brown free. He can go. Gets the corner. Touchdown, 
Penn State. This is a team that has not quit in this quarter. The game may be over, but they've turned in two big plays, and that's a 59-yard scoring pass. And that's what college football is about, Brent, not quitting, not giving up. Roundtree is 13th catch this year. Five of them have been for touchdowns. It's a pretty big receiver, too. You know, one of the few passes you see Penn State throwing over the middle, and this is what I'd like to see them do more so they give guys like Roundtree a chance to move on the run. Boy, those guys had the angle on them, too. Now it's Eats. They've got the speed on the outside. It's up to the quarterbacks now to put it in their hands. He nails the extra point. Well, it could have been a lot worse than this. Penn State showing some heart right now. We'll be back. Folks, it was 41-7. Penn State scores on two big plays, so Coach McPherson brings the Orange men around and says, we've still got 8-13 to go in this football game. This one's not over. And on the far side, Joe Paterno is delivering the same message. And the onside kick return team, again, on the field, there are nine Syracuse players around midfield, including one of the backup quarterbacks, Todd Philcox. Now, Eric Eats will kick this one off rather than Tarasi. Remember, they broke out of that huddle last time. He'll go back. Nine men expecting the onside kick is Ray Roundtree. Now they break out into a more standard alignment, the kickoff team. It's the onside kick. Don't think it went 10 yards. No. You need to get one more bad bounce out of that thing to have a chance on that. Yeah, you have to get that yeah. good high bounce right. on the carpet, don't you, Pat? Yep. That really topped the ball. Well, what's on tap next Saturday? Again, it'll be one of those traditional rivalries. USC and Notre Dame and our start time, 1.30 Eastern time. And the starters are back. Coach Don McPherson returns here in a 41-21 game with 8-12 to go. The entire starting offensive line in front of him. Stoppel, Flannery, Garrett, Bednars, and Sims. The tight end, Pat Kelly. Johnston and Owens, and on the draw, Owens fumbles. Penn State ball. Now it's up to Bill, who's huddling with Paterno on that far side. Brent, you mentioned 1985. That was the year, too, that Syracuse had a chance to lock them, and they fumbled right at the beginning of the fourth quarter, or end of the fourth quarter, when Penn State made the play. David Jacob made the recovery. They're right back in it. And, again, give Tom Bill some credit. We saw him come in against Alabama a few weeks ago and do a job as well. free across midfield. Well, it is so tough to turn enthusiasm on and off, and that's exactly the problem that Syracuse is facing right now. Derek Ward, number 52, relaying the defensive call there. The regulars are back on defense. Ted Gregory in at nose as Nebraska wins easily today. 7.37 left here in Syracuse. bring Green around, and on the cutback, oh, was Ward ready for him? Number 52, and Bavaro joins in. That's the second or third time Penn State has tried this play. Green is on the wing. It's just a little counteraction. And early on, it looked like there was going to be a hole. But Ward and Bavaro just step up into the hole and put the stop on Green. They are inside of five yards, but barely. That's really, this looks like third and five to me.
for the 13-yard gain, and you give these kids high marks for their courage. Look how much room there is at the bottom of the screen for Roundtree on third and five. They're protecting the lead, but again, Penn State is picking up first downs and getting themselves right back in the game. That was a nice audible there by Bill. And Bill, who was out of Flemington, New Jersey, only a sophomore, and he's showing a lot of poise right now. Simpson in motion. He can fly. Thomas in behind the right side. Close to the 35-yard line with Paul Fraze bringing him down. Joe Paterno's teams don't quit. Let me welcome those of you who watch Nebraska extend its unbeaten record and head toward that November showdown with Oklahoma. Here we're watching a spirited comeback by Penn State. The question is, is there enough time? Now Bill, under pressure, steps up against it and takes off. Crosses the 30-yard line. He had to get near the 26 for a first down. Neither team has used a timeout. We've had a game that's been remarkably free of penalties here so far. It was at one point 41 to 7 before a blocked punt and a 59-yard pass play to Ray Roundtree put them back. And this is what happened moments ago. Tom Bill hit Ray Roundtree. He's a very long strider, and he makes a nice run after he catches the ball. He doesn't look that fast when you watch him in practice, but with a long stride, he can outrun people. Bill pulls out. He's under pressure on third and short, throwing incomplete. On that far side, it was incomplete. Fourth down, and Penn State will go here on this situation. Very interesting call by Joe Paterno. He doesn't throw the ball much on third and short, but watch the drive by the defensive back there to make the play on it. Now, ordinarily, in that situation, you'd have two downs to run for the first down. That was David Holmes back there in the secondary, number 38, who came up and played that hard. Now, Brown is in the backfield instead of Thomas. Fourth down. He's got the first down for the Nittany Lions at the 25-yard line. Again, you know, Penn State has been in, even though they've won so much over the last few years, Brent, they've been in a lot of close games. And one of the things they've been able to do is manage the clock pretty well over the years. It's another trait, I think, of Joe Paterno teams. And remember, disaster disaster as if this Syracuse team when they played Penn State there's some nervous folks there even though time is running down that's green cutting back now Bill with the play fake under pressure won't get it off as Rob Burnett number 70 out of Corum New York gets the sack pressure on both Kisner and Bill, and even when he hasn't gotten there, he's made them hurry the throws. That time he did get the sack. Now, Penn State really should be on, on the line of scrimmage right now. Let's take a look at Rob Burnett. He is number 70 at the top of the screen right here. Again, he beats the tackle as he comes up field. Just beats Freeman, number uh, 71, makes the play. Passing situation. Tetson almost intercepted, and that was Terry Wooden, number 90, who dropped off his linebacker and made the big play. Third and 20, you're probably not going to get it all at once. I think you need to think about getting 10 yards here on third down and 10 more on fourth. Your yeah, best shot is to get, get the ball to a round tree or an Alexander while they're on the move over the middle. Third and 19. Two plays for Penn State. Bill down the sideline for.
for Roundtree, incomplete. At the five-yard line, it was incomplete. The ball was thrown a little bit behind Roundtree. Bills feels the free, the safety, uh, bus crook number 27. He feels him in there, so he throws the ball outside a bit. But in this kind of situation, you have to give the receiver a chance. Keep the ball in play. If there is to be any miracle, Penn State needs a first down on this play. They must get to the 15-yard line for a first down. Alexander on the end around. Syracuse was ready. John Dominic, number 85 from Rome, New York. Well, it looked like an awfully bad call because they didn't get it, but I don't mind that call on fourth down. It's very much unexpected. Look at that happy moment for Coach Mack as Ben Schwartzwalder moves down to the sideline. 338, Syracuse up by 20. McPherson back on the field, and the Orangemen should be able to run this one out. So a few nervous moments, but Penn State really had to score quickly in that sequence. They were bending, but Syracuse did not break. Can't say enough about the job that Johnson has done today, Brent, blocking, too. Clock down toward 310. Total yardage wow. and five touchdowns, passing for three and running for two, and certainly putting himself into contention for the All-American quarterback. Meanwhile, for Joe Paterno, an embarrassment, but it could have been a lot worse. They came back, didn't they? I think it began last night after midnight down on the Penn State campus when. The gang of four from Syracuse went down there and spray painted the Nittany Lion a bright orange. They were arrested down there after that. I think each of them fined a couple hundred dollars by the police department down there. But folks, they returned to Syracuse with the photographic evidence and it graced the front page of the paper here today. It's been that kind of a weekend for the Orange Men. McPherson going long to Kane. Kane's got it. Fumbles inside the five. Five yard pass play. And Brent, ordinarily you can't come in from out of bounds once you go out, but if you get knocked out like Kane did, you can come back in bounds. This is a sensational throw. This ball is right on the money. He's pretty well covered by 87 Henderson, and he gave, gave the ball plenty of loft. The ball is fumbled, but see, he's knocked out so he can come back in and make the recovery. So Tommy Kane, and you know. Tommy Kane from Montreal, Quebec, has caught six passes for 163 yards and two touchdowns. Oh, Canada indeed. Now with a wishbone inside the five-yard line. No one's tripped up. Inside the two. So Coach Mack able to recruit Tommy Kane, whose boyhood friend was a young man by the name of Alonzo Highsmith. You know, Tommy Kane did not go down there to play for Jimmy Johnson in Miami. Highsmith hasn't spoken to Kane since, but they fly the Canadian flag proudly here in Syracuse. A lot of fans come across the border. And this young man, Tommy Kane, has had himself a day. With the second and goal. to the end zone. And if Syracuse scores here, Brent, they have an opportunity to break the NCAA record on extra points. At a minute 18. 
17. That would put it at 200 for consecutive eight consecutive extra points. Barnes in that backfield along with Daryl Johnston and Michael Owens. right at the goal line. That was Rich Schoenwolf, Brian Chismar, who made sure he didn't get it. So 17 years of frustration coming to an end here for Syracuse. They haven't beaten that man since 1970. And Syracuse is back on the map in Eastern football.